Today, we are talking about conflict. conflict. Frank, are you just gonna use a karate chop to emphasize the key word of every video from now on? Yes, yes I, I am. So how does personality type add fuel to the fire of a conflict? Type differences between two people might even start a conflict where there really isn't one. More importantly, we're gonna discuss how to talk to the personality types when tensions might be a little high. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video about what will get the 16 personalities to confront you. So this is a good bookend to that. Now that they are confronting you, now that you're in an argument or conflict, how do you communicate with them for the best outcome? How do you talk them down? How do you get yourself out of a sticky situation? There are a few different angles we can look at when it comes to talking to other types. Let's start with the basics, then move to the more advanced stuff. Generally, the most important letters of a type to look at are the middle two letters, also called the function pair, which is the perceiving letters S and N, and the judging letters T or F. Someone's perceiving preference will tell us what kind of information they are generally going to notice first and foremost, and therefore what they will typically focus on in conversation or debate. Say for example, an intuitive has a plan for a project and they are excitedly telling it to a sensing type who stops them with the question, where's the money coming from to fund this? Dragging the intuitive out of their intuitive realm and into the world of stupid sensory data and real world logistics. I hate that stuff. Or to flip that around, say a sensing type is working hard at a job they enjoy and the intuitive type says, why are you working there? That is a dead end job. Dragging the sensing type away from their ability to enjoy life in real time and forcing them to look at the bigger picture. So already we can see just from the information a type focuses on how an argument could arise. Same situation, different perspectives. The judging preference on the other hand will tell us how a type will prefer to act on that information. A feeling type is most likely going to be concerned with morals or social values while a thinking type will judge more logically and practically. And you guys know how it is. Sometimes the right thing to do and the logical thing to do are not in alignment. So it can be easy for these types to argue with each other over these differences. We can really start to see the magic of type when we look at the combination of the perceiving and the judging preferences together. An ST type will have the most pragmatic and practical of all the preferences, caring about the hard facts and data and how do they make sense. The NFs on the other end of the spectrum will care the most about conceptual values, you know, like peace, harmony, identity. SFs are gonna care about the real world and immediate implications of ethics, values, and relationships. Essentially, they wanna be living in accordance with what feels right right now. NTs are gonna care about logical systems and outcomes related to their conceptual interests, things that are usually a little more theoretical, like a long-term plan or metaphysics, whatever, whatever that is. When you are talking to different types, it's important to keep in mind not only what your own preferences are, but what theirs are as well. If you are an NF, it's gonna be really hard to convey your idea to an ST or to anybody, really. It doesn't mean though that an ST type can't see what you're talking about. It just means that they're approaching the problem from an entirely different perspective. If you share any preferences with another person, try to emphasize those points more in conversation. Like an, an NT and an ST can usually get along in the realm of T. It's like four o'clock. It's tea time. Terrible joke. <laughs> if you don't share any preferences, it's okay. Just use your imagination. Think about what you want to say. We're not changing the content here, just the wrapping paper around it and how you can reword things a bit to play to the other person's function pair. Now here's the thing. I know people in the comments are going to say, Frank, why should I cater to them? Well, because you know about type and they probably don't. They are like a cat who thinks every other animal is a cat and they wonder why this other cat is barking all the time. Whereas you have the knowledge that not every animal is a cat. And so when you see a dog bark, you know it's because it's a dog. So that is why I put the onus on you, the FJ viewer. Anyway, let, <laughs> let's just do just a quick example. Let's say I have a boss who is an ESTJ. Now I'm an INFJ, so we don't have a ton in common now, do we? So I want to ask my boss for a day off so I can spend some time with my family. It's my son, FJ3's T-ball game, and I 
can't miss it. Why did they put it in the middle of a work day? I don't know. I'm not the T-ball commissioner. Now I could approach my ESTJ boss and say, it's really important feeling for me to spend time with my family because I care about them, which is also feeling and a little bit of intuition. But in my boss's ST mindset, all she sees, because it's a woman owned company, okay, is her workplace being one worker down. She sees the practical logic of the situation. The work is not getting done because FJ is at FJ3's T-ball game. Why FJ3? I guess I was just thinking like RG3. No one in my audience knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so what can I do? How about I do this? I will rewrap the content of my message to be a bit more sensing thinking focused for the convenience of my boss. I'll be like, hey boss, I want to have Thursday off. My son, he's in a T-ball game in the middle of the day. I don't get it. But anyway, I know work still has to get done. So I'll work some extra hours at home on the weekend or whatever so that you're you're not left in the lurch. Now we have a win-win situation where I get Thursday off and the boss has a logical reason to give it to me. All right, so that was the easy version. Let's get a bit more technical. Let's talk about cognitive, cognitive functions. functions. The most noticeable cognitive functions when it comes to confrontation or debate are the judging functions, T-E, T-I, F-E, and F-I. This is because these functions are quite literally how we decide on information and what about certain aspects of information we are gonna care the most about. That sentence was really mangled. <laughs> Why are those functions the most important? Because they are the ones that make decisions and decisions lead to conflict. The thinking functions are generally going to lead a person who is more willing to be confrontational about what is important to them. This isn't because thinking types aren't or can't be empathetic, it's just that they value the logic and practical utility of things more than the ethical aspects such as a person's feelings. T-E types, the TJs, are generally gonna be the most upfront about their opinions and thoughts, especially the ENTJs and ESTJs. This is because TE, is the function most focused on the application and use of logic. Because their thinking is externally focused, they are comfortable expressing their logic to others, or at their worst, demanding that the outer world follows their logic. So the best way to handle conflict with a TJ type is to give a realistic solution to the problem that is being faced. TJ types are less likely to get caught up in their own feelings and instead tend to get most annoyed or angry when something isn't working as intended or as well as it could be or as quickly as it could be. They don't like waiting around. So the ultimate communication tip for the TJ types is to address whatever the problem is as quickly as possible and with as little emotional expression as possible. Do not cry. Do not laugh. Do not make a smirk. Do not look jocund. TI types, the TPs on the other hand, logical consistency is really the most important thing for these types, especially the INTPs and the ISTPs. Believe it or not, these types often want to fit in socially, but they can't help saying things that upset others due to their desire to point out when things aren't logically consistent. They don't care if you are solving the problem. They want the problem to be solved in the most correct way possible. It's like that math teacher in school. It doesn't matter if you got the right answer. If you can't show your work and all the work isn't done correctly, it doesn't count. You don't get full credit. If you are in a confrontation with a TP type, one of the best things you can do is to recognize that a large majority of them don't intend to hurt your feelings. They might think you're dumb and say it to your face, but they don't want you to feel bad about it. If they come off as demeaning or insulting, offer them some non-accusatory feedback such as, hey, I really appreciate your logical input here, but the way you said that came across as a little bit mean. I am holding back tears right now. It can actually go a long way to kind of diffuse the situation. I know you're thinking, well, Frank, that seems kind of emotional to work with a thinking type like this. But here's the thing, it's because you don't want to back them into a corner. Because if you do, introverted thinking has the potential to really dig in to a point of no reason. It's tough to beat them at their own game. So you gotta play things a little more cool with them. FE types, the FJs, hey, that's my name, are a lot like TE types in that they can be forward with their opinions. They are generally a lot more tactful though, and their desire is usually to bring people together socially and emotionally in the long run. Fairness and harmony are a big part of the FJs' daily lives, and you are most likely to find them in conflict when there is some sort of turmoil that isn't being settled correctly. FJs are a bit 
unique though, in that I think there are two kinds of FJs, as weird as that sounds. There are your harmony and peacekeeping focused FJs who just want everyone to get along. And then there are your FJs who are willing to push against social harmony a bit to attempt to improve it in the long run. This isn't just an NFJ versus SFJ thing though, so don't attribute it to the intuition preference. It's more so about whether or not the FJ feels a responsibility to act. Perhaps it just comes down to how assertive an individual is. The best way to handle confrontation or conflict with an FJ is usually to ensure that the outcome will be fair emotionally. In the end, Everyone will feel the same way. We will all be happy, or maybe we will all be sad. At least we will all feel the same way. And it's also a good idea to reassure these types that your friendship or your relationship is still okay. Because if an FJ starts to see a relationship in decline, this can be a source of great stress and anxiety for them, which can lead them to preemptively overreact to avoid any future hurt or pain. I think this is where the INFJ door slam comes from, but it's not exclusive to that one type. Man, I gotta tell you, FE takes <laughs> so much effort. Anyone who has FE will tell you it's like the worst function to have. So yeah, if they see that relationship falling apart, it's tough because <laughs> they don't wanna have to put in extra energy. They're just like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna take the money and run. Let's get out of here. Last but not least, I wrote lease in the script. <laughs> That's like a weird advertising campaign for uh, like buying a house. Last but not lease, I'm not leasing, okay, never mind. We're talking about the FI types, the FPs, who just like the TPs can dig their heels in on their values. FI is probably the most personal of all the functions in that it decides on the things that it likes with no real need for logic. This feels right to me, so therefore I am going to identify it or even champion it because this thing now is like part of me. I can feel it. This can be particularly difficult to communicate with because FI is not a function that can really be reasoned with. This isn't to say that FPs are logical, but more so that they aren't gonna care if something is logical if it doesn't resonate morally with them. You could tell them all day, this thing makes sense, but if they're like, I'm not feeling it, doesn't matter. The best way to handle confrontation with an FI type is to confirm that you understand and respect their position even if you disagree with it. The absolute worst thing you can do to an FP type is to try and police what is right or wrong, to try to shove it down their throat. FI types want, for the most part, to be left alone and allowed to express themselves as they see fit. In return, they often allow others to have the same freedom as well. If you don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. So in a conflict, give the FP a bit of autonomy and show them that you appreciate them for who they are and they are likely to have no problems with you. They will be more willing to to try to find common ground. Now, as I said, this video is a part two to the video I did earlier about what will make the 16 personalities confront you. Check that video out right here. And until next time, stay cool and attractive.